Hello and welcome to Gromforks. Today I will be showing you a tutorial on how to build your first sim single stage to orbit space plane, or as known, commonly known as SSTO. Uh, this here is an example of the craft that are gonna build. Okay, so let's start. You will also notice that I'm using a ton of mods, but to build the simple crafts you won't need that many. What you will need is Space Plane Plus mod, and for this command pod, for the cockpit, but Space Plane Plus will be coming in the 0.25 anyway. So, uh, going on with the Space Plane assembly, first we need to assemble the fuselage. So we take the cockpit, and then from the control parts we're looking for SAS reaction wheel to give us some sort of control while in space. Uh, then we will be looking for a small cargo bay, 2 meters cargo bay. And we are using B9 for this particular part like that and also since the role of main role of this space plane will be a, a passenger jet to ferry kerbals to and from low carbon orbit space stations we'll need a crew tank which we will put here um, and then we will take a docking port to make things easier to dock to a space station which should be somewhere around here. This is once again Space Plane Plus component. And then the only thing which remains is uh, basically the rest of the fuselage, fuel tanks and engines. So for the fuselage we'll take the B9 standard Mark II fuselage and we have taken the big 5 meter one which we will immediately assign to be liquid fuel and oxidizer as this tends to deploy rapidly and when it comes to just the liquid fuel for uh, atmospheric flight you don't need that much because the atmospheric flight is very very efficient so for that one we will be using the 2 meter fuselage and we will assign it to liquid fuel. The next we thing we need to mount is the engine and let's just see where do we have the engine mount. Yeah, here it is. This is also a part and feature of the new B9 that each component can be put up to be a different tank. Now you don't really need to put this one as liquid fuel but I consider it to be actually an advantage to have a little bit of extra oomph if you need to. Now, for the engine we will be using stock um, stock uh, rapier engines that come from sw squad and we will be putting them in dual symmetry like that and this should basically be the bulk of our fuselage. Uh, one thing that we need to keep in constant check is our center of mass and center of lift. As you can see right now they're pretty much uh, terrible. Ideally you want the two of them to be aligned and fairly close with the center of mass being slightly ahead of center of lift. However that will be all fixed once when the wings come into the place. Uh, now for the wings, I'm using the procedural wings, which are very handy because you don't really need to assemble a ton of um, different components and you can just draw the wings as you like them. So let's just put the name on this puppy. So Ray Beer YouTube Mark 1. Press save. 
So for the wings from the procedural wings, we will be taking the Mark II procedural wings and um, they're really handy. So once you actually attach them as a surface, you can see our center of lift moving back and forth. I tend to also use the 90 degrees as you can see here and this is one of the other mods called editor extensions. Uh, I will be putting the full list of mods in the description. So you fit the wings here and then you use R, T and G to shape them. So if we press R you can see them and draw the mouse you can see our wings roots expanding. Um, when pressing T you will be folding the wing tips and on G you're extruding the wings towards out outwards. So I actually am a very big fan of a delta wing design so pretty much all of my SSTOs have some sort of delta wing style associated to them. So let's put them something like this. This looks about right. And um, also uh, I just for the beauty's sake I tend to add additional wing tip here which I tend to then um, tweak a little bit. So a little bit like this with a T and uh, looking from the upwards also a little bit with G so it's uh, an extension and uh, I don't like when it's like this thick towards the end so I tend to take down the tip thickness to 0 0.1 so it's kind of pointy. Now for this wing tips I prefer to put them at an angle and you can do that by pushing shift and I think it's E in my case so you can put them like this something like this at an angle and uh, this will actually provide you with some additional vertical stability when it comes to high angles. Alright, so now we have the wings and you, as you can see we already have the center of lift and the center of mass more or less like we would like them to be and this is the ideal case. Uh, one thing that you need to be careful about is also uh, that the fuel will shift. So as the fuel is being consumed your center of mass and center of lift will shift. So if you see when I take out the fuel from the tanks you will you can see how my situation is shifting forwards and ideally for re-entry when your fuel will be low anyway this is the setup that you want to have because having the center of mass too close to your center of lift will cause your plane to flip on re-entry and go with its behind first. So this is roughly ballpark what you want to be careful about when looking at the center of lift and center of mass. We will revisit that at a later stage. Alright, now with those parts properly fueled, uh, what we want to do is add a little bit more control surfaces uh, most specifically canards at the front to give the plane a little bit more authority when it comes to climbing. So we put something like this at the front. As, as you can see it doesn't do a lot for our center of lift but it will do actually wonders for our ascent profile and taking off of the runway. Um, Alright, so now the next thing that you do need, and you need pretty badly, is the actual intakes. Now, the higher you get, uh, the, the intakes will dictate the influx of the air that will be going to your engine while you're flying in the atmosphere. So for those I will be using the B9 intakes, and I will 
attach them surfacely. So I will remove this 90% angle snap and I will put them here like this on the surface. And all of this is being obviously done in symmetry. You can put how many you want, but I guess it depends on what you want the aircraft look and feel to be. Uh, typically I tend to put roughly uh, four pieces and that would be two on the top and if you flip the aircraft I also tend to put two on the bottom so and which I try to align more or less so that they are in the same place just for aesthetics reasons actually um, now the intakes will produce drag on re-entry and um, this is actually very useful because ultimately you do want your space plane to go like a dart so the mass want to be an, you want to be at the front and the drag surfaces everything that is providing drag you want to be like the behind of a dart so everything at the back um, now let's see so the intakes are one thing that provide the drag and the other thing that provides drag is the air brakes most of these things are provided by the B9 so uh, I typically tend to put two sets of air brakes towards the wingtips and one more here in the middle of fuselage so I can actually vary the amount of the total drag that I'm producing uh, now let's see what else do we need we actually need some wheels and for the wheels I'm typically tend to use this heavy-duty landing gear and I will once again put the 90 degrees attachment and I will disable the symmetry so that um, we can place them something like here approximately and when I'm mounting the back wheels I'm putting the I'm disabling the 90 degree rule or actually let's see if that works for 90 degrees yeah actually it does Oh well, then I'll put it using, and of course we put them like this on the symmetry. So, one and two. Uh, if you do have, uh, your, if your wheels do tend to wobble, well, that can happen. I mean, it's, a, it's an annoyance clearly, but... Yeah, all right, let me just see one thing first. Uh, actually, I might want to put my wheels not on these. So let's see if we can put them rather here instead. I will go through the reason why I'm doing so in a second. So, uh, the main reason why I don't want to actually, why I prefer to keep the wheels a little bit more forward is because uh, of the rule that you want to have your wheels to be just slightly behind your center of mass because the plane, when the plane will be taking off, it will be taking off, um, it will be very hard if your center of mass is too far ahead of your wheels. So let's just I'll try and align them. If anybody knows any command where you could, or any mod that you could use to align the wheels with some two objects together, that would be very helpful if you could post that in the comments below. Now, all right, so we have our plane and we have our wheels. You will notice that this will produce a slight angle and ultimately this is what we want to have because of the takeoff profile so you don't have to pull hard on the stick and risk damaging your engines. Now then, um, let's see. 
We have air brakes, wheels, and intakes. Now we need to take care of the payload. Um, given the fact that I'm playing with tech life support uh, mod enabled, that means that I will need to think about some supplies for my Kerbals. So I take the life support container and I'll attach it in the cargo bay and then obviously if they need to go to the bathroom you will have to have a waste container as well. Um, then you want to put, uh, let's say, uh, an, if you will plan, be planning on docking, which we clearly do, given that we put an RCS port or the docking port here, uh, I want to put some monopropellant fuel and the RCS thrusters. So, uh, let's see. Um, now while we are figuring out the payload, we can put the one RCS fuel tank here and some batteries and some RTGs. So, batteries we can put here, like this, and like this, so that we have enough electric charge to perform more or less everything was needed. And then we come to the RTGs. Let's see. Mm -hmm. How much is this? This is 400 and this is 1,905,002. Okay, so the RTGs we will put also inside here. Oops, did I disable? Yeah, I disabled the symmetry. Hold on. Okay, let's do it this way. We will move the fuel here. Yep. And then we will put the RTGs here. I think two are enough, but if you want more you can put them. Just make sure that everything you built is built using the symmetry. And I think that should more or less do it for the for the cargo bay. Um, ultimately, I do tend to put some lights just for you know, so it's e more easy to actually check what you what you have inside. So let's put some of them. Hold on. Now let's put two lights inside because why not? Okay, and then now we can actually close our cargo bay doors. As you can see, this didn't affect much our center of lift and center of mass. It actually just aligned them pretty nicely too. Uh, now, what we want, the next thing that we need to take care about is the control surfaces. And once again, I will be using procedural wings to do that. I just need to find all moving wing and procedural yeah this is the one so what you we let's say that we put it like this hold on and then we angle it like this and uh, these are by the way also affected by the RTGs buttons but you want to be really careful not to mess up your wings so that's kind of a extra tip how you want to put them and actually G will make them slightly longer so and then you want I will just make them a little bit smaller because they don't need to be that big something like this should do it I think Yeah, something like this should work. Okay, now then, uh, the one more thing that I tend to put is obviously the tails. And for the tails I'm using the same 
more or less the same thing that I'm using for stabilizer. And I tend to put them quite wide so that I have enough clearance from the docking ports. Um, yeah, sort of like this. Uh, so the next thing that you want to do is to actually tweak your control surfaces because right now they're set up that every control surface does everything and usually it's a bad thing for business. So for the stabilizers you want them to control pitch and yaw, pitch and roll, but you want to disable yaw. Um, for the tails you want them to control only yaw and once again for these two you want also to have your disabled. Right, so that, let me just save, and that pretty much makes our control surfaces set up. Now the next thing is, and I have deliberately left that as the last component, is actually the uh, the RCS. Now, um, typically, uh, if you just place your RCS things willy-nilly, you will get, uh, when you try to dock, you will, it will be very, very hard for you to dock. And this will, because placement of the thrusters of, uh, affects the total momentum and also rotation of your aircraft. Um, in order to demonstrate this, I'm using a mod called RCS Build Aid, which is pretty much essential. And this one shows you additional um, point here. And as you place your thrusters, which I do tend to put these ones simply because they have slightly higher thrust, and they are five way as opposed to the regular ones that are only like four way. So. Um, I put these two and let's see. Now I put the two of them like here and I put them towards the wingtips. And uh, if you take a look now, it says translation, center of mass and direction up. So Let's try with right. Okay, so if you look like this, uh, there will be no rotation, but there will be slight, I guess, translation. The main translation will be actually this way. And that's pretty decent. Now let's see if we can add a little bit more thrusters to the bundle, just that we have a little bit more thrust. So let's see here. So I found that this placement works quite well actually. So we have four like this and let's see if we can put some also at the bottom. And I found these arrows to be also very very helpful in terms of giving you a hint where do you actually need to place your thrusters. So let's see. Two more here and two more here. Now if I remove you if I remove this thruster you will notice that right now with the current thruster setup there is a slight rotational moment indicated by this red arrow and this is ultimately making your dockings very very difficult. So you do want to have sufficient amount of RCS thrusters so that you can control the craft, but not too many and they need to be well placed in order to completely negate the rotational moment of the aircraft. So, something like this. They're not exactly aligned, but I think this will work pretty well. Now, since we have put um, RTGs, you can also check different directions, up, down, and forward. So as you can see it's pretty much stable, no rotational no moments around here. Alright, now that leaves us just with one, let's say, 
aesthetic uh, improvement, if you will. And I tend to put lights, just because it some places it can get a bit dark and it's always handy to have a light. And I do tend them to put them somewhere around, let's say here, angle them slightly and hold on, angle them a bit downwards and to, towards the center of the craft. Like this. Oops. Yeah. So I think this should do quite nicely. Okay. Perfect. Um, in case of some larger aircraft, you might want to also add a little bit of struts, just in case. I found that not to be particularly necessary with this one, but just for the safety reasons, if you don't, do want to avoid additional wobble, it never hurts to add more struts, right? So you put some two, and I put additional two here at the back, just for safety's sake. Okay, so the last thing remaining before the actual launch is the control groups. So, uh, when it comes to control groups, you want to, s I tend to set them up like this. So, for the first control group, uh, I tend to put the switch mode for the rapier engines. And for the second control group, I tend to open and close my intake. So I put the toggle intake. And don't forget the bottom ones, if you have set them up. So um, Closing the intakes, well, you don't, well, you don't need to do it when you are flying or switching mode. And uh, I will show that in a bit. So when you're switching the mode from your atmospheric flight and going very high altitude towards the orbit, uh, when you switch the mode, you will be burning oxidizer. And in that case, uh, you no longer need the intakes to provide you with uh, the air supply. So you want to close them to reduce further drag. Um, for the third uh, group, I tend to put the the clamp, toggle clampatron for the fourth I tend to uh, put let's see nothing for the fifth I tend to put the cargo bay doors and now for the nine I I usually put dual brakes on the wings and for the 10, I put the single brakes in the middle. All right. Now, so this is pretty much makes your plane more or less ready to make a test flight. Now, if you really want to do some something extra, just to make sure that, I guess, your Kerbals are safe, uh, there is a mod called Vanguard Ejection Module, and you can put that one actually on the, let's see, on the top of the, the important thing is to put it on the crude pod. So you put it like here, and maybe you need to put this additional one here, but right now we're gonna, only going to have test pilots in, so we don't need to care pretty much about that. And yeah, I will be fly And the last thing is you actually add the crew. Uh, all right, that pretty much covers the constructions. So let's give this craft a test flight, shall we? Okay, so we are lined up on the runway and we can basically just quickly test our control groups. Now, 
let's say now, as you see, rapier engines is air breathing, close cycle, fine. Uh, intakes, open, close. All right. We said the three is the docking port. Fine. Five, cargo bay. Yeah, I remembered now that for the four, I tend to put the lights on in the cargo bay. But we can, I mean, turn them off for now. They're not needed. So, five, and then we have nine and ten. Okay. Now, if you by accident detach and reattach the wing, you will need to fix your common groups for symmetry. Okay, so flight computer on, brakes disabled, throttle up, and three, two, one, ignition. This is it, moment of truth. So our plane is slightly angled, so hopefully it should be able to take on its own. Just to make it more interesting, I have actually disabled the flight computer to see that, that it doesn't prevent it from taking off. So roughly around 100. Well, if it doesn't take off, it might be, you can give it a little nudge. And as you can see, the aircraft is pretty much balanced. If you need to trim it, you can do so by pressing Alt S to trim it upwards. And as you can see, I'm more or less flying without the help of the computer at all, which is perfect, it means that the craft is well balanced. But just in case, I'm gonna put now the flight computer on and go towards our ascent profile, which is 40 degrees upwards. By the way, if somebody knows how to fix this transparent bug, please post that in the comments. It's pretty annoying. I guess it happens only to the B9 parts. Oh no, the space plane parts too. Interesting. So, uh, you will also notice that for my mods I use alternate resource panel and the flight engineer. The flight engineer is very useful because it can give you hints on how quickly are you traveling, etc, etc. What's your epoapsis, time to epoapsis, intakes, and but I will discuss that a little bit later. So, now our speed is dropping, so I'll just ease up on the stick a little bit. I think we have picked up a slight angle, so you, I might want to correct the, this. Okay. I think this should, this should be quite alright. So, basically when ascending with an SSTO, you want to pitch as high as possible, or roughly 30-40 degrees, until you come to some altitude of roughly, let's say, 10,000 or 11,000. And then you want, to, so that you basically come out of the thickest part of the atmosphere. Then you want to level off and pick up as much speed as possible while maintaining a fairly low ascent profile. And ideally, you want your speed to be at around 1500 or 1300 meters per second when you actually reach the point where you have to switch the mode to the closed cycle. So, now we're roughly around 10,000 uh, 10, meters and I will pitch to roughly 10 degrees and level of the aircraft. We can see the KSC at the bottom. So, just for fun, I can turn on the lights because I do expect that we will be going into darkness. Oops, wrong button there. No. Uh, 
Oh, by the way, one thing that I forgot to mention is for this pod, it's being automatically uh, mapped to the abort sequence action group, which is usually backspace. So you might, if you have put this ejection seats, you might not want to press it by accident. So yeah, I guess we are crossing the threshold, we are getting out of the thicker part of the atmosphere, which means we should be picking up speed fairly decently now. And um, yeah, as you see, the, my delta V is being calculated basically here. Uh, in case of some finger craft, what might happen is that your engines start overheating, so you will need to do a little bit of a balancing dance to make sure that uh, to make sure that your engines don't overheat. That happened to me when I was trying to design my heavy SSTO, codenamed Odin. crossing the 600 or 700 which I think far would say a roughly a Mach 2.3 so we are supersonic as as you can see the craft is still very very stable very aerodynamic and by the way I love this uh, procedural wings mod because it severely reduces the part count especially the if you are going into the bigger craft. And it, likes, it also makes you ni make nice space planes. Okay, we are approaching 20,000 meters roughly, and my uh, intake air usage is close to 27%. So, what I do want is to pick slightly more speed before I get out to. So, I will nudge it uh, just a little bit more downwards because you want to use as much of the atmosphere to you to get the to gain speed as possible because atmospheric mode is incredibly fuel efficient so you basically want to use as little of the closed cycle mode as possible so if you see our velocity vector we're just slightly coming up and our surface speed is rising. Now if this comes to 100 your engines will switch to the closed cycle so I'm trying still to prevent that from happening just yet. I mean this aircraft has pretty sufficient uh, delta V to get to the low carbon orbit but I just think that every little piece of the fuel counts, so you might want this, when you're at 24, you might want to keep this vector as, not as high as possible, but, so now we're getting the re-entry effects a little bit, and the temperature is rising, uh, you also have to monitor your temperature if you're using deadly re-entry, not to go much over 1400 and whatnot, I think, so, yeah, that's another thing to be careful about. So, let's see. We're still pretty stable and we're right on the money. So now when we start picking up speed, actually, uh, our angle will go up and our intake air will go down. So we'll be switching to a closed cycle relatively shortly. But then again, your speed I mean, our speed is already pretty high up, so we don't have to worry too much about us not reaching the atmosphere. I think pretty much now it shouldn't be a problem any longer. So, uh, and when this comes to 100, I will press 1, although probably your engines will switch automatically. I just prefer to have them switch at the same time, so roughly around 90. 8% I'm gonna do the switch so now and I have immediately as you can see disabled the intakes 
and you might want to throttle down not to overheat the engines. And now we only need to do is to actually monitor our apoapsis. And we might want to turn on the lights. Yay! As you can see, my delta V dropped significantly once I have actually uh, switched to the closed cycle. And ultimately, if you want to get as far up as possible, you might want to just pitch further high up, just to get as quickly to the higher bits of the atmosphere as possible consume the least amount of delta V. I mean, you will still need it for circularization, but I found this to be actually quite efficient. So we put our apoapsis to roughly 90%, then I turn off the engines, and I tend to switch to the uh, map view and prepare for our circularization. Now, given that we have already a fairly decent speed, we can actually continue to go upwards now. Uh, hold on a second, let me just... Uh, okay, so uh, we put it at apoapsis and we will do the circularization. A bit, so it's r nice and circular, roughly 80 by 80. Let's see, 80 by 86 by, ah, I think that's that, that should qualify. All right, and our burn is in two minutes, so, and it's 300 meters per second, which leaves us still enough fuel to actually deorbit, go back, etc. So, we, while we are still in atmosphere, you don't want to fiddle too much with uh, the with your aircraft position because it might there might be some aerodynamic drag that associated to it. All right, so now we have crossed the threshold of the atmosphere, and I'm just going to align with the node like this. And when we come in the two minutes, we will be reaching our apoapsis, and then I will perform the circularization burn. This game can really be beautiful at some time. We might put, want to put something like that as a screenshot once we reach the orbit. And we can accelerate it slightly because we don't really need to. Yeah. This is another mod that I'm using. This is the Kerbal Alarm Clock, which automatically sets up the alarms. Uh, and I have configured it when I'm creating a node, it will automatically set up an alarm and warn me one minute before the actual node comes up. So as you can see, our uh, estimated burn is 20 seconds. That means roughly at around 12 seconds before the node, we will punch the punch the uh, throttle full four. Okay, and final adjustments, and let's hit it. By the way, I don't tend to monitor my apoapsis here, but I rather to tend to check that my periapsis will be matching my apoapsis, more or less. So. Slightly more. Yeah, there we go. And this is how you make an SSTO and fly it to the low carbon orbit. In the next video I will be covering re-entry and how to 
make you sure your aircraft is stable during the re-entry and also how to ensure that you land roughly around the Kerbal Space Center so that you can land on the runway. Thank you very much for watching. This is Gromforks signing off.